I'd like to mention an important uh, problem-solving technique now for kinematics, uh, which is that when an object reverses direction, um, its velocity in that instant is zero. When an object reverses direction, its velocity in that instant is zero. When an object reverses direction, its velocity in that instant is zero. So, for example, let's say we have an object that's moving to the right and then moving to the left. Uh, now, really, I'd have to show it moving to the right and then moving to the left along the same path, because uh, I want to think about one-dimensional motion now. Um, but if I try to draw both motions on the same path, it's going to be difficult to see what I'm saying. So even though I drew this path above this one, what you should really imagine is moving to the right and then moving to the left along the same path. Moving to the right, then moving to the left. Moving to the right, then moving to the left. Let's try to figure out what the velocity is at the instant that we change direction. Remember that these two points are really the same. I've only drawn them separately, so these two, um, these two diagrams don't obscure each other. But this is the instant at which we're changing direction. We're moving to the right, but then when we get to this point, for an instant, we have to change direction. And then we start moving back to the left. Well, let's say that right is our positive direction. So um, in this portion of the path, um, the velocity must be positive because we're moving to the right. And now in this portion of the path, the velocity must be negative because we're moving to the left. Well then, what's the velocity going to be at the instant where we transition between moving to the right and moving to the left? Well, if here the velocity is positive and here we're transitioning to moving to the negative velocity, we have to pass through zero. Uh, we can't just have a jump in the velocity. The velocity can't just jump from positive to negative. Um, you can see what's happening here is we're moving to the right, but we're slowing down. We're moving to the right and going slower and slower and slower and slower until for an instant our velocity is zero, and then we can start moving to the left. And maybe we can start moving to the left faster and faster. The, um, so again, if we're moving to the right, the only way we can change direction is if we start moving to the right slower, if we start slowing down. So eventually we get to the point where we're hardly moving to the right at all, and then, our uh, and then for an instant we're motionless, so to speak, and then we start moving to the left. All right, so I hope this helps to convince you um, that at the instant that you change direction, your velocity in that instant is zero. At the instant that you change direction, your velocity is that in that instant has to be zero. Um, because, for example, in this case, the instant before we changed direction, the velocity was positive. And the instant after we changed direction, the velocity is negative. Well, the velocity can't just jump. Um, it has to pass through zero. So if we're passing from positive on this path to negative on this path, there has to be an instant when we change direction where the velocity was zero. Okay, so this is an important point um, to put in your notes. Anytime an object is changing direction, its velocity at the moment that it changes direction is zero. We've said that anytime you reverse your direction, um, in the instant that you reverse your direction, in that instant, your velocity is zero. In the instant that you reverse direction, your velocity must be zero. Um, let me try to give, ex give you one more explanation for why that is. So let's say this is the path of the object. At first, it's moving to the right, and then it's moving to the left. Of course, it's really moving to the right and then the left along the same path but I'm going to put the return path down here just so it doesn't overlap with the outward path. Okay, so we can split this into three portions. There's the portion before you reverse direction, there's the portion after you reverse direction, and there's the instant when you reverse direction. So how about before you reverse direction? Before we reverse direction, um, what direction is the velocity in? Before we reverse direction, what direction is the velocity in? Well, clearly, before we reverse direction, we're moving to the right, so the velocity is to the right. How about after we reverse direction? What direction is the velocity in now? After we reverse direction, we're moving to the left, so the velocity is to the left. After we reverse direction, we're moving left, so the velocity is left. But how about what direction is the velocity in in the instant that we change our direction? What direction is the velocity in in the instant that we change our direction? Well, if you think about it, it doesn't make sense to say the velocity is to the right when you're changing direction. 
Because when you're changing direction, you're not really moving right anymore. When you're changing direction, you're not really moving to the right anymore. So how could your velocity be to the right? So when we're changing direction, when we're changing direction, it doesn't make sense to say the velocity is to the right. Because then you would be moving to the right. You wouldn't be changing direction. Also, if you're changing direction, it doesn't make sense to say the velocity is to the left. If your velocity was to the left, you'd be moving left. You wouldn't be changing direction. So we can't have a velocity to the right, and we can't have a velocity to the left. Well, what else is left? The only other possibility is that the velocity is 0. If the velocity is not pointing right and it's not pointing left, um, we're doing it with one dimensional motion now. So if you're not pointing right and you're not pointing left, that can only be because the velocity is 0. Only a, only a vector that doesn't have any length at all doesn't have to point in any direction. So here's another argument for why when you're changing direction, your velocity has to be zero. Um, when you're changing direction, it doesn't make sense for your velocity to be pointing right because you're not moving right. You're, you're changing direction. And when you're changing direction, it doesn't make sense for your velocity to be pointing left because you're not moving left. You're just changing your direction. Um, and so the only other possibility is that the velocity is zero. So again, I hope that makes you feel more comfortable with the idea that in the instant that you change your direction, your velocity is zero. Um, but even if you're not comfortable with it, now's the time to memorize that fact. In the instant that you change your direction, your velocity in that instant is zero.